guys welcome back to my channel um i am just going to do this try to film this once um i apologize for the lighting it's late in the evening i do have a ring light but when i film in the evening and put on the ring light on full it gives me migraines so i'm not really gonna do that but i just wanted to film this little video i suppose more or less talking about flare-ups and with the hope of maybe having a discussion down in the comments with other people who have different kinds of flare-ups my name is Jennifer, in case you haven't been here before. I'm 26 years old and I am diagnosed with hypermobility Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, but mainly EDS is my, my issue. And when I have a flare up, I'm usually referring to EDS um, in terms of my joint pain and things. So I just wanted to talk about flare ups because I found myself recently explaining to my cousin um, who was asking me what a flare-up felt like and I think she's ex she, you know she's experienced with mental illness so she knows what a mental illness flare-up can feel like when things get excessively bad at some points and I guess I struggled to explain a flare-up and what if why a flare-up is extra hard because for EDS I'm obviously talking in the context of EDS and in terms of a physical flare-up um, if you have a different illness if you have a different diagnosis let me know what your flare-up is like because you know you can always learn um, and I just really really wanted to talk about the reason it's so difficult is because it impacts absolutely every aspect of life you know it really does there's no aspect of life that stays unaffected by a flare-up um, in terms of EDS, whilst you have the flare-up of increased mobility, um, looseness of joints, increased dislocations, sublocations, and just increased pain in general, that feeds into every area of life. And that is why a flare-up is so difficult. So I just wanted to talk through some of the areas uh, very quickly of life that are affected by a flare-up. These I've noted down here. I just wanted to be able to keep track of them, but also if you can think of anything else, if you also have EDS and you can think of other areas, let me know because guaranteed I forgot some. Um, but I guess I, the first thing, I, first and most obvious thing a flare-up affects is my mood. Um, and I would say usually at the beginning of a flare-up, I usually tend to feel a lot of anger. I usually tend to feel so much irritation at myself because I usually haven't identified the fact that it's a flare. I start pushing myself too hard and working extra hard and staying up extra late to get things done when in reality that didn't help anyone you know um but towards the middle to end of a flare not that you ever know when the end is i would say i would typically feel very um numb i guess and i think that's a safety feature nearly installed in your brain to keep you moving through life is to keep yourself from, from the pain and the effect of physical pain on your own mental illness and your mental state um you know is it's state of numbness to be honest um yeah i probably find that most difficult i would use an app to log my mood regularly and you can always see you can always trans see the points at which i've had a flare-up or a particularly bad pain day even if it's not a full flare-up you know um, it's, it's not easy. Another thing I find incredibly challenging is getting out of bed. Um, actually everything to do with bed because getting out of bed in the mornings is hard if you, you know, life doesn't stop when you have a flare in terms of work or school or, or college or anything. All of your responsibilities remain the same, um, but your ability to handle them drops significantly. So getting out of bed is challenging, but also getting to sleep is challenging. And personally for me, I find staying asleep quite hard. I wake up multiple times a night during a flare up. I will always wake up um, lots of times a night. And you know, a lot of the time I assume I wake up due to pain because I'll roll over and maybe my shoulders might be not in place or something like that. And that causes them pain. Other times I just think I just struggle to get to sleep and to stay asleep. Um, it's like there's no comfortable position, there's no comfortable place to be in the 
world, you know, to be honest, for both my body and my mind. Um, so I really struggle with that, definitely. nearly 2 a.m. Um, and I have sent, spent the last few hours sleeping and now I'm awake and I need to bear in mind I have a full face of makeup on right now and this is how bad I look I think something that people don't talk about that often in flare-ups is or else maybe they do and I just don't follow enough people <laughs> um, is and maybe this is a part of pot syndrome is my the temperature control just goes mad I am roasting right now but I'm wearing this because the second I take this off and I'm just in my shirt I'm freezing and this is what it's gonna probably be like for the next few days um, I feel pretty tired <laughs> dejected um yeah the concept of basic hygiene right now not easy I have been lying here for the last half an hour. It's now probably like half two. I'm trying to convince myself to get up and wash my face, take off my makeup and brush my teeth. And I just so, I'm just tired of pushing, if that makes sense. And I don't even know why I'm smiling when I say that. I think I'm smiling because it makes me nervous to admit that I'm tired of this. I'm just tired. It's nearly 4am and I've woken up again. Um, I think due to pain. I'm not really even sure. Another thing I struggle with is eating and drinking. I tend to not particularly prioritize food when I'm in a flare up, usually because my appetite drops naturally and I don't even notice it until I'm after the flare up and I realize how little I've eaten. Um, but I struggle to drink. I do struggle to drink because it's my, I also struggle more with my swallow during a flare up for some reason. I'm more inclined to cough and choke on food and water and things when I have a really difficult flare up. I have no idea why that is. I'm sure there's some science behind it somewhere, but I have no idea why that is. So a lot of the time, I think I find myself subconsciously drinking very little water. Um, you know, very little <laughs> anything, to be honest. And usually that'll last. My, I mean, most of my flares probably only last a few days, but it's still not great to be drinking such little water, especially when I am usually someone who drinks a lot. Like this is my, bottle of water I have everywhere. It's massive. It's a liter and a half, a liter and a quarter or something. And I would drink a few of them a day. So usually I would fly through it, but not definitely not during a flare. A lot of the time I will misspend my energy and use my energy on the incorrect things and then end up with brain fog when I try to actually do the task that I needed to do. For example, for this video, I did my makeup um, and I absolutely ran out of energy instantly after doing that. I am sitting here in my pajamas with my hair up like this, yet having a full face of makeup, which was that a smart use of my energy? No, not at all. But it's, it's like, it's like everybody else's energy levels almost go down in a very gradual sense, whereas ours tend to jump off a cliff and nosedive so fast and you have no warning. You sometimes have warning, obviously, other times not necessarily. 
So that's another thing I really <laughs> struggle with, especially when I have to do work tasks or like even just reading for college and I know I need to read maybe one paper or two papers. No, <laughs> it's, it's not happening. You know, something I was thinking about in terms of flare-ups as I was sitting here spacing out is that sometimes we can incorrectly use our energy but only realize after when it's too late, when the energy is gone. Um, like for example, I put on some basic makeup just to make myself feel better and made a coffee and had a good breakfast and all that and I'm sitting down doing some work and I have no energy. Like I feel, I often say to my mom that I feel like an invertebrate but I do, I feel like there's nothing holding me together. Like all the glue in my body is just disappearing with each minute and I'm becoming less of a person with each minute. I suppose it kind of is because collagen is my problem so which is kind of a glue but yeah that's just it's another problem <laughs> one of the last things i'm going to talk about is um i suppose a struggle with basic hygiene because when you're going through a flare because it just everything that takes a minimal amount of effort usually you know like even brushing your teeth or washing your face in the morning or brushing your hair um is suddenly a monumental task you know it's suddenly it's, it's suddenly the difference between a good day and a bad day is if you expend the energy on showering versus not. If you're someone who doesn't have a chronic illness or an illness in general and doesn't go through flare-ups, um, <clears throat> I think it's very easy to judge and say, that's so unhygienic, that's gross, or, you know, there's, or even I see people make that same comment about people who are going through particularly bad patches with their mental health and maybe you know, haven't cleaned their room in ages or whatever, or been able to shower and things like that. It's not like it's intentional. Um, even myself, a few nights ago, I really struggled. I had to take off makeup that I had on from work. And I think I just um, brush my teeth. I think I procrastinated doing that by just lying and staring into space on the floor for nearly two hours. So, and that's not, you know, in a, in a way I'm wrong to call it procrastination because it absolutely was not procrastination. My joints feel like lead and like they're going to drag me to the center of the earth with their heaviness. And somebody is asking me to care about my dental hygiene when I absolutely couldn't care less. I mean, those are the basic things, I guess, that are affected by a flare-up, but I, I really do, I suppose, ask you that if you are someone who doesn't struggle with a flare-up, or even if you're like me and you do, but maybe there's someone, you know, else who experiences a different kind of flare-up, just educate yourself before you make, maybe make a comment, before you throw around with words like lazy or, or like I just called myself, you know, procrastinating. It's not, it's not the case. It is like there's just such weights tied to every bone in your body. And somebody asks you to care about something that's very minimal in comparison to that pain. It's very hard to have an interest. And I think people who don't struggle with this obviously find that hard because you go from maybe one week when you're not having a flare up when things are still hard, but less hard to do. And you care about your hygiene, your room being clean, you know, doing your clothes washing and all of that kind of stuff to suddenly not wanting to do it whatsoever um and I think that's really really a hard juxtaposition for those people to understand um but I think that's where it comes in where people need to ask more about how they're doing honestly and expect an honest answer rather than you know a nice catered answer of I'm fine or oh you know the usual the usual is probably bad so you know I've written a blog post about this actually recently um, called Strength Fatigue because I really just wanted to, um, sorry now my phone, just a message popped up there on my phone, but I really just wanted to cover the idea that telling someone repeatedly that they're so strong for doing what they do to stay alive is <clears throat> not really a compliment that it's intended to be because if anything it's just a reminder that other people understand you even less. Um, yeah, so I'll link that blog below just in case anybody's interested. And yeah, let me know about your flare-ups. I'm always interested in learning, you know, about different illnesses, not just ehlers Danlos Syndrome, or even different types of EDS, actually. That would be really cool. Um, 
I just honestly I just want to hear from anyone who experiences something vaguely similar so I expect I really do thank you for letting me sit here in my pajamas um looking like this with this you know with all of it going on I really respect that and I really thank you for that and I hope you guys are well and I hope you both you both this is what I mean is I'm having brain fog day and my ability to speak just tends to drop off mid sentences anyway thank you so much for watching I really appreciate it that's what I was trying to say <laughs> and I will see you guys soon very very soon